This fly is gonna be the 20 inch stone. It's tied on a Tiemco 200R, which is a 3X long, slightly hump shank nymph hook. This fly's got several parts to it, and I'm gonna start at the front. We're gonna put a bead on this fly, and in this case, this is a size eight, we're gonna use a 5 32 inch gold bead, and I'll show you how to put that on here in a minute. We're gonna use some lead wire to weight the fly down as well. We're gonna use 20 thousandths lead wire. We're gonna use black monocord thread, brown goose biots for the tail, some tan floss for the ribbing, peacock curl for the abdomen, a turkey quill feather for the wing case, a partridge feather for the legs, and some hair's mass dubbing for the thorax. Uh, this sounds like a complicated fly, and it's a bigger fly, um, but it really doesn't work out to be that, that much harder than a hare's ear. It's just a matter of putting all those pieces together on a little bit bigger chassis. So to start with, I'm going to take the hook, I'm going to put my bead on it, and if you'll notice, most hooks, or all your fly tying beads, I should say, have a small hole and a big hole. So when you put the bead on the hook, you want to put the point of the hook in the small hole to let it slide around the hook bend. Uh, the back hole is a little bit bigger diameter, and that's to allow it to go around the radius of the hook bend without catching. We're going to put some lead wire on the hook next. So I'm going to take a length of this 20 thousandths diameter lead, and depending on how heavy you want your fly to be, will determine how many wraps of lead you like. Um, I tend to fish these flies kind of spring runoff or pre runoff, um, and I like them pretty heavy. So I'm going to make maybe 12 or 15 turns. Like so. And I've just wrapped that wire around the hook. It's very malleable and soft, so it's easy to wrap. I'm just going to use my fingernail to break off the edges on both ends. If I lift that bead up a bit and push those lead wraps into the bead, that helps to both center the bead and it also locks it in place so it won't move around while we're tying. Now I'll start my thread, and I'm going to start it just behind our lead wraps. And before I go too far with my thread base, I'm going to build just a bit of a thread dam. And that's just a taper from the bare shank up to the diameter of the lead wire here, right where the two come together. And that's just to smooth that step off so I don't have a big jump between the diameter of the lead and the diameter of the hook shank. I'm going to run my thread one more time all the way up to the back edge of the bead just to crisscross the lead a bit and lock everything down so it won't move. I'm going to continue on back to the bend. Now in this fly being a bigger size fly, I'm using that 3-aught monocord. 3-aught is a, uh, about twice as big as your standard 70 denier thread. Um, relatively flat in nature, although it does twist up as you make several turns. It's a good thread for medium to larger sized flies um, or flies where you can afford a little extra bulk. 20 inch is a perfect example of a good spot to use this. Now we're going to put some biot tails on this fly, and there's a several tricks to tie in biots, and I'll walk through them a few different times. But what we're going to start with is two of these biots. We're going to pull them off the, the base of the feather, and I'm working up toward the tip end of the feather to get a little bit narrower biot. So I'm going to pull two of these biots off, and they're both, they've got just a slight curve to them. In this case, they're, they're curving toward the bend of the hook. Some of them will have a, a much more pronounced curve. Um, any of them will work. They don't have to have a huge amount of curve to get them to work right on the fly, but we do want a, a, a little bit of a curve there. I'm going to grab one of these biots in my hand, and I'll turn my other hand over to oppose those two biots so they're now curving away from each other. And I want to even their tips up so they're the same length. Once I've got them even, I can measure this against the shank, and I want these about a half a shank long. Stoneflies have a very pronounced forked tail, and that's what these biots are going to represent. Now, getting these two little biots tied in is a whole different story. These are a feather. They come from the leading edge of a goose primary flight feather, uh, but they're a feather in name only. They're very hard. They're not soft at all. They feel more like plastic or wood than they do a feather. So the trick to tying these in is letting your thread torque work for you rather than work against you. So I've got these measured to half a shank long. I'm going to place the butt ends on either side of the hook. One of the tricks on tying a biot, or one of the catches when you tie a biot tail in, is if you go to tie it right where you want it, it's never going to end up there. Your thread torque is always going to twist these hard feathers because they don't compress like other feathers. So to get around that, the best trick I can show you is rather than set the biots right at top dead center, which is where I'm holding them here, I want to tilt them just a little bit toward me. If I tilt these biots just a bit toward me, that's going to allow my thread torque to twist those feathers into place rather than out of place as it would if I set them in straight. So to follow that, I'm going to put just one turn over these 
and I've got them just slightly set off to my near side. Now, generally I won't let go when I do this, but you can see as I tighten this thread how those biots will square up on the hook. And that was just a matter of tightening the thread down. We're pretty well square there. I'm happy with where those went. And that's with one turn of thread. It's just about where the thread torque is allowed to twist those biots into place. Once they're in place, I'm going to continue wrapping forward over the stub ends. All the way up to the base of the lead, and then I'll trim off what's left. And you can see how those biots sort of became an underbody on the fly as well. Just helped to smooth things down a bit. So we've got a nice fork tail off the back of the fly. I'm going to take two strands of tan rayon floss for the rib. If you're tying a smaller fly, one strand will be plenty. On this bigger fly, we're going to want to use two strands. And I'm going to tie this in at about our 60% point. And I'll wrap back over it along the near side of the hook all the way back to the bend. And anchor those in place. I'll set those in my material spring just to hold them out of the way for the time being. That's going to become our rib. Now for the abdomen of this fly, I'm going to use peacock curl, and I've got a relatively large hook and a long distance to cover, so I want to use a big bundle of peacock, and I'm going to use, oh, I think I've got eight of them here, eight peacock curls, and I want to try to get the tips as close to even as I can get them before I trim them down. Now, because I don't want to burn up all the good tips of this feather by tying it in up the front, I'm going to tie it in here at the bend by those narrow tips, so I don't build a big, large amount of bulk there at the bend. I want to try to keep everything as smooth as I can as I come forward. I'll bring my thread up to about 70% point. So now we're going to wrap the peacock curl forward to form the abdomen. As I wrap forward, you can see that the peacock will mirror the taper of that underbody as slight as it was with the lead wire. And I'll tie that peacock off and trim the stub ends. So I've got a nice bushy peacock body. Now in some cases, particularly on a smaller fly, you can come in and trim some of that peacock to accentuate that taper a bit. Now I'm going to take my two strands of floss, and in this case I'm going to twist these together. So I'm just going to roll them in my fingers and twist these into a rope. And you can see how I'll roll them as I wrap to form the rib as I come up the fly. And I'll tie that off at the front as well, two or three tight turns then I can trim the stubs. Now we're going to put our wing case in. I'm going to take a slip from this turkey feather cut that's, that's cut just about as wide as the gap of the hook. This is much wider than I need it to be, so I'm just going to separate out, separate out a few strands and remeasure. And I want to make sure that that's about as wide as the gap of the hook there. And I'll trim the tip end square. Take them down just another notch. I'm going to tie this feather in with the inside of the feather up by the tip end at the front of the abdomen. Now I'm going to overlap just slightly back to about our 60-40 point, and I'll lay that quill in flat on top and press my thumb down on it and catch it with a couple turns of thread so it's tied flat and smooth across the top of the fly. All right, for the legs, we're going to use a partridge feather. This is a Hungarian partridge body feather, and I like the darker modeled feathers for this pattern. And I'm going to strip just a few of the fibers down here at the base. I can even pull those off. I, I do want to cut, try to keep that center stem intact, though. And then I'm going to grab the very tip of the feather and slide the rest of the fibers up and away. So I've got the tip exposed to tie in. And you can see the inside curve, the concave side of this feather is now facing up. I'm going to lay this feather in with the base of the tip right at the front edge of the wing case. And I want to try to keep that as centered as I can. And I'll wrap down over it to anchor things and then trim off the excess. So I've got that feather with the fibers stroked backwards, tied in upside down as we did the wing case at the front edge of the abdomen. Now we're going to dub the thorax. And again, on this fly, we've got a lot of bulk already built there in the thorax area, so it's not going to take a lot of dubbing. Um, this is some light hair's mask dubbing from the edges of a hair's mask. I'm going to draw out some thread, and this is a bigger fly, so it is going to take more dubbing, but don't get carried away with it. We want to build up a pronounced thorax. This fly can cross over for a, a dark stone or a golden stone pretty easily. It's got a little bit of both sets of colors in it, and the addition of the peacock in it 
gives it some attractor qualities as well. So this is kind of a, a mixed bag fly that will imitate a lot of different stuff. I'm going to start this dubbing just behind the bead and I'm going to work up the hill back to the base of the wing case and then forward again just sort of squaring off the front edge of the thorax right up against the back of the bead. Now I'm going to pull my partridge feather over and I'll stroke these fibers back along the sides. Now I can see here on the top I've just got a few more fibers than I need on each side of the, on the feather so I'm just going to pull off those extras press this feather down on top and cinch him down in place. That's why I left the stem there so I can keep that centered. And I'm going to take my turkey quill feather and I'm going to pull it forward over the top of the thorax and cinch it down with a couple of turns making sure to keep it centered as well. I'll anchor a few tight turns of thread down and then I'll come in just along the back radius of the bead and trim off both the butt end of the partridge feather and the back end of the turkey quill wing case. Now you can whip finish right here but I don't like to have that big thread head showing right behind the bead. So I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of dubbing, that same hair's mass dubbing, to my thread, just a very thin layer. And I'm going to wrap it over those last few wraps of thread. Now when I whip finish, in order to keep those thread turns hidden, I'm going to set up my whip finisher and I'll let these turns slide right off the back edge of the bead and that'll tuck them under the dubbing right tight up to the back edge of the of the bead where the whip finish won't show. I can then trim the thread off, trim any loose fibers and sort of get anything aligned that needs to be. I've got a couple legs here that kind of go in the wrong way. We'll just fix those up with the scissors. And we've got a nice little 20 inch stone, uh, relatively simple stone fly nymph pattern, great little attractor fly, can be used as a green drake nymph, a golden stone, a giant salmon fly nymph. Um, tied in a variety of sizes from 4s all the way down, down to 14s. Really an effective fly, great springtime pattern as well.